What You Need was based on the 1945 short story of the same name by Henry Kuttner and C.L. Moore under their joint pseudonym Lewis Paget. This episode also wasn't the first on-screen adaptation of it. Before The Twilight Zone, there was another science fiction anthology TV show called Tales of Tomorrow. They aired their episodes live on ABC from 1951 to 1953 and had many big-name talents featured during its run. Paul Newman, James Dean, Boris Karloff, Cloris Leachman, Leslie Nielsen, and more all made appearances. Their episode was much closer to the original story than the one adapted by Rod Serling, and is available to watch on the Twilight Zone Blu-ray set. Actually, most of the Tales of Tomorrow episodes are public domain, so you should be able to track them down online if you want to see any. Watching both versions of What You Need back to back made for an educational experience. An old street peddler named Padat has a knack for knowing exactly what people need when they need it. He shows this ability off in a bar with a down-on-his-luck former Major League pitcher. He pitched for a couple of years for the Cubs. What does he do now? <laughs> he comes in here seven nights a week. Used to pitch for the Cubs and now gets drunk seven nights a week? Yeah, that checks out. Anyway, Padat feels sorry for him and hands over a bus ticket. Bus ticket to Scranton, Pennsylvania. Now what's in Scranton, Pennsylvania, old man? Unfortunately, no, there's no Dunder Mifflin appearance. Would have been a heck of a Twilight Zone twist, though. A moment after he gets the ticket, the payphone at the bar rings. The man then hears he's been offered a coaching position for a minor league team in Scranton. He's supposed to meet with the general manager soon, but there's a stain on his suit coat. Earlier, Padat gave a bottle of stain remover to a woman at that same bar. She takes the opportunity to offer it to the former pitcher, and they are immediately attached to each other. Padat leaves before they can question him, but a man named Fred Renard has been watching and confronts him outside. Fred is a shady character who forces Padat to give him what he needs. Padat hands over a pair of scissors that come in handy later when Renard's scarf gets caught in an elevator door, nearly strangling him. After that, Fred confronts Padat again with the aim of exploiting the old man's gift for his own personal gain. Padat is a gentleman and doesn't want to participate in Renard's scheme, but every time he approaches him, Fred gets more and more threatening. In the original story, the old man with the ability to look into the future was a scientist who used a machine. Serling liked the basic idea but swapped out the scientific explanation with the more vague fantasy element of Padat having an unexplainable power. As such, it fits right in as a Twilight Zone episode, and one I enjoyed quite a bit. The pacing of this episode is a little slower, but it works because the tone here is so intriguing. The mood is set by some great looking shots of the dark urban neighborhood the story is set in. This was shot on the back lot at MGM, but they did a really nice job of making it look even more realistic than usual. I think the bright flashing lights and damp reflective streets add a lot of character to the atmosphere. The overall look of the episode is just really engaging. Credit to director Alvin Ganser and usual DP George T. Clements. In addition to a solid score by Van Cleve, this episode has a really strong cast all around. While Ernest Truix can be a little overly mysterious at times as Padat, he shines in a few great exchanges. Serenity, peace of mind, humor, the things you need most, I can't supply. Steve Cochran as Renard plays a convincing, angry brute. There's an underlying sadness to the character that's hidden under his indignant demeanor. I was born under a lousy Zodiac or something. I've been getting the dirty end of the stick ever since I was four years old. The rest of the cast does well in their shorter parts, too. The bartender, former pitcher, and spot remover woman pepper the beginning of this episode with charismatic turns. After dropping a hint on a winning racehorse, Fred continues to pester Padat about giving him more things he'll need for the future. Forcing the issue, Renard looks to Padat's travel case and takes out a pair of shoes. He thinks this is what he needs and puts them on, but they're too tight and have slippery leather soles. Padat crosses the street to get away from him when a car turns the corner. Fred slips on the wet road and can't move. He's then hit by the car and killed. Padat goes on to explain that he regretfully set the event up for this to happen. You were going to kill me. So what was needed was slippery shoes. 
The moment where Renard is hit by the car is pretty bad. It's sped up like a Three Stooges short and kind of undercuts the moment in an otherwise visually impressive episode. In the original story, he falls in front of a train, and in the Tales of Tomorrow episode, the car accident happens off screen. <laughs> much more effective and a better visual choice than what we got here. But it's not a huge complaint as the episode was done really well overall. I think it's worth checking out, both versions actually, but I do think the slightly better one took place in the Twilight Zone.